Good morning, and welcome to St. Paul of the Cross Church. Today we celebrate the second Sunday of Easter. Our celebrant is Father Nick Cal Cavallari. We especially welcome all visitors and new parishioners for this time of prayer together. We ask that everyone please rise and join together in singing number 680, We Walk by Faith, number 680. to the heavenly kingdom. Alleluia. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the Lord be with you. Amen. Dear brethren, let us humbly beseech the Lord our God to bless this water he has created, which will be sprinkled on us as a memorial of our baptism. May he help us by his grace to remain faithful to the spirit we have received. Let us pray. Lord our God, in your mercy, be present to your people's prayers and for us who recall the wondrous work of our creation and the still greater work of our redemption, graciously bless this water. For you created water to make the fields fruitful and to refresh and cleanse our bodies. You also made water the instrument of your mercy for through water you freed your people from slavery and quenched their thirst in the desert. Through water the prophets proclaimed the new covenant you were to enter upon with the human race. And last of all, through water, which Christ made holy in the Jordan, you have renewed our corrupted nature in the bath of regeneration. Therefore, may this water be for us a memorial of the baptism we have received, and grant that we may share in the gladness of our brothers and sisters who at Easter have received their baptism through Christ our Lord. We humbly ask you, Almighty God, be pleased in your faithful love to bless this salt you have created. For it was you who commanded the prophet Elisha to cast salt into water, that impure water might be purified. Grant, O oh Lord, we pray, that wherever this mixture of salt and water is sprinkled, every attack of the enemy may be repulsed, and your Holy Spirit may be present to keep us safe at all times. Through Christ our Lord.
May Almighty God cleanse us of our sins and through the celebration of this Eucharist, make us worthy to share at the table of his kingdom. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. King, O oh God Almighty Father, glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God. Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. Glory to God in the highest and on earth. Peace to people of good For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in the glory of God the Father. Let's pray. God of everlasting mercy, who in the very recurrence of the Paschal Feast kindled the faith of the people you have made your own, increase, we pray, the grace you have bestowed that all may grasp and rightly understand in what font they have been washed, by whose spirit they have been reborn, by whose blood they have been redeemed. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. The community of believers was one of heart and mind and no one claimed that any of his possessions was his own, but they had everything in common. With great power, the apostles bore witness to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great favor was accorded them all. There was no needy person among them, for those who owned property or houses would sell them, bring the proceeds of the sale, and put them at the feet of the apostles and they were distributed to each according to need. The word of the Lord. Give thanks to the Lord. For he is good, his love is everlasting. Give thanks 
to the Lord, for he is good, his love is everlasting. Let the house of Israel say, his mercy endures forever. Let the house of Aaron say, His mercy endures forever. Let those who fear the Lord say, His mercy endures forever. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love is everlasting. I was hard pressed and was falling, but the Lord helped me. My strength and my courage is the Lord, and he has been my Savior. The joyful shout of victory in the tents of the just. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, his love is everlasting. The stone which the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. The Lord has this been done. It is wonderful in our eyes. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us be glad and rejoice in to the Lord, for he is good, his love is everlasting. A reading from the first letter of St. John. Beloved, Everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ is begotten by God, and everyone who loves the Father loves also the one begotten by him. In this way we know that we love the children of God when we love God and obey his commandments. For the love of God is this, that we keep his commandments. And his commandments are not burdensome, for whoever is begotten by God conquers the world. And the victory that conquers the world is our faith. Who indeed is the victor over the world but the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God? This is the same one who came through water and blood, Jesus Christ, not by water alone, but by water and blood. The Spirit is the one who testifies, and the Spirit is truth. The Word of the Lord. Thomas. 
Jesus, because you have seen me, says the Lord. Blessed are they who have not seen me, but still believe. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. On the evening of that first day of the week, when the doors were locked where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit whose sins you forgive are forgiven them, and whose sins you retain are retained. Thomas, called Didymus, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples said to him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my finger into the nail marks and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. Now a week later, his disciples were again inside, and Thomas was with them. Jesus came, although the doors were locked, and stood in their midst and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands, and bring your hand and put it into my side, and do not be unbelieving, but believe. Thomas answered and said to him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you come to believe because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and have believed. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples that are not written in this book, but these are written that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that through this belief you may have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord. Happy Easter, everyone celebration of Easter continuing through today, which is Divine Mercy Sunday. We also have uh, donuts available if you walk out this door and then take a right and head over to the gym. We have once a month this Donut Sunday, an opportunity to spend some time with your fellow parishioners and uh, uh, foster fellowship. And uh, so my encouragement, I'll be heading over there as well, is to, even if you just want to stop by and say hello and, and uh grab something to go, or I believe also if you would like to sign up to be a parishioner, I think they might have a table too, so keep that in mind after when Mass is, is finished. Also, since today is Divine Mercy Sunday, we have a new image right here, which we will bless and venerate. We have a holy hour planned for in honor of Divine Mercy Sunday, which will be at 3 p.m. and consist of the Divine Mercy Chaplet Adoration and uh, benediction of the Blessed Sacrament, uh, followed by readings and prayers and confessions as well, which will help people who want to uh, fulfill the qualifications for plenary indulgence. So join us at 3 p.m. for that as well. Let's see, am I forgetting anything? Okay. My dear friends, as we look at the Acts of the Apostles, we've been following throughout this last few weeks the chronicles, the struggles, the triumphs of the first followers of Christ. And we are noticing that their central message is of the goodness of the gospel message, the good news that will be that is meant to be delivered to not just those nearby but all the world and how the church attempted to live out their new Christian faith and to evangelize the world. So what we have today in this particular narrative is the description of an early Christian community. And maybe there's four things that kind of stand out as you look at uh, the character of this community. 
Number one, that there is a dedication to prayer, just like the Lord in his ministry always began the good works that he would do by going off into the desert to pray to the Father, to be nourished by that time that they would have alone in prayer. The disciples carry on this tradition as we do today. Also, there is an adherence to the teaching of the apostles. So this is their guiding light, is what has been handed on to, to them and they are handing on to others is the apostolic teaching. Number three, they have they celebrate a vibrant liturgical life. And liturgy is like the Holy Mass of one. And another litur liturgy that we'll see, of course, is the Holy Hour we'll have for Divine Mercy Sunday, which is another type of liturgy. So vibrant liturgical life, and they would break bread together. They would ha celebrate the Eucharistic feast that was the source of strength and energy for their community. And then number four, they had a oneness of heart and mind. So they, the individual's possessions were renounced. And this was so that they would have the resources that were needed to share the gospel with all the world. And that they could continue their efforts to spread the gospel. Now, in the gospel today, Jesus appears to the ten fearful disciples. And he gives them a gift of peace. And he shows them his wounds that he incurred out of love for them and for all. Jesus breathes on them and bestows the gift of the Spirit, the one that would animate their ministry, that would guide them and strengthen them for the trials and challenges that they would face. But Thomas, we notice, and perhaps we can relate to him ourselves if we've experienced some of these same feelings, is that he says, I need more evidence. I want to touch the wounds, he said. And Christ appears again, meeting Thomas in his doubt. And Thomas, who now is able to touch the Lord's holy wounds, says, my Lord and my God. He recognizes that this truly is the flesh and blood, that, we, that he is seeing the flesh and blood Jesus and not just a ghost. If you remember when they were on the water, they saw Jesus walking on the water. They said they were fearful then too and thought, is this a ghost? And now they dispel that, uh, that doubt. And uh, we also say, my Lord and my God, during the Holy Mass when the priest elevates the host during the Eucharistic prayer. Now, this closing passage that we see in the gospel is very powerful in that it helps illuminate one of the main purposes of this handing on of the gospel, the reason for it to continue to be passed along. And this is how it goes, just to refresh our minds. Now, Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples that are not written in this book, but these are written that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that through this belief you may have life in his name. Jesus says also, blessed are those who have not seen and have believed. That's us. And we pray that the Lord may remove any barriers that keep us stuck in doubt so that we may move to be able to sus subscribe to a hope in Jesus, ready to move beyond investigation to joyfully witness so that love may grow in us and we may be able to bring light into the world. Throughout the Easter season, because of its character, the Apostles' Creed is often used, and that can be found if you open the books in your pews in the order of Mass, somewhere buried in the middle there, is the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who is conceived by the Holy Spirit, 
born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. As we continue to celebrate the resurrection, we are confident that Christ intercedes for us at the right hand of the Father. With faith in his love, we make our prayers in his name. That the presence of the risen Lord may transform our fears into boldness, our uncertainty into faith, and our hesitation into courage. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the victims of terrorism, hunger, war, abuse, or neglect will find the love of God that brings comfort and compassion. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Divine mercy is the reaching down of God out of love through the incarnation and paschal mystery in order to restore us to himself. May we be open to his healing grace. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who volunteer their time, talent, and efforts at St. Paul of the Cross, may they receive the choicest blessings from our Heavenly Father. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick, the suffering, and the homebound, especially Joe Garvey and baby Oliver Letcher, and those listed in our bulletin, may they receive God's healing love. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer that the families of those who have died may grieve with hope, consoled by the knowledge that Jesus who died and rose again will bring to God those who have fallen asleep, especially Edmund Burke, Kathleen Joyce, Vladislava Canel, Santi Lucchese, Mary, Kathleen Mary Pasquale, and Glenn Phillips. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for the special intentions of this Mass, Jose Almendarez, Michael and Irene Jaworski, Amy Zalud, Joey Furio, Liana Pini, Alice and John Brunke, Elaine Zick, Mary Forrest Hopkins, Caden Ingram, and the deceased members of the Cooney, Dockery, and Forrest families. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Loving Father, we offer these prayers to you today with confidence in your constant love for us and through the merits of Christ your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Please join in the singing of our offertory hymn, number 524, Alleluia, give thanks to the risen Lord, number 524. to the risen Lord. Alleluia, alleluia, give praise to his name. Jesus is Lord of all the earth. He is the King of creation. Alleluia, alleluia, give to the risen Lord. Alleluia, alleluia, give praise to his name. Spread the good news over all the earth. Jesus has died and has risen. Alleluia, alleluia, give Thanks to the risen Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Give praise to his name. We have been crucified with Christ. Now we shall live forever. Alleluia, alleluia. Give thanks to the 
risen Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Give praise to his name. God has proclaimed his gracious gift. Life eternal for all who believe. Alleluia, alleluia. Give thanks to the risen Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Give praise to his name. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the oblations of your people and of those you have brought to new birth, that renewed by confession of your name and by baptism, they may attain unending happiness through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but on this day above all, to laud you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying he has destroyed our death, and by rising restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic host sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Oh, holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Blaise, our Bishop, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants. And all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you the sacrifice of praise so they offer for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls and hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true, celebrating the most sacred day, the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ in the flesh, and in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmas and Damian, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers and all things, we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, Graciously accept this oblation of our service, this of your whole family which we make to you, also for those to whom you have been pleased to give the new birth of water and the Holy Spirit, granting them forgiveness of all their sins. Order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, 
He took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord, we, your servants, and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance, and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant, Abel the Just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest, Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who, though sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon. Through Christ our Lord, to whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord, you sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. the Savior's command and form by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. 
Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
please join in the singing of our communion hymn. Number 941, Eat This Bread. Number 941. This bread, drink this cup, come to him and never be hungry. Eat this bread, drink this cup, trust in him and you will not thirst. Christ is the bread of life. The true bread sent from the Father. Eat this bread, drink this cup. Come to him and never be hungry. Eat this bread, drink this cup. Trust in him and you will not thirst. Our ancestors ate manna in the desert, but this is the bread come down from heaven. Eat this bread, drink this cup, come to him and never be hungry. Eat this bread, Drink this cup, trust in him and you will not thirst. Eat his flesh and drink his blood, and Christ will raise you up on the last day. Eat this bread, drink this cup. Come to him and never be hungry. Eat this bread, drink this cup. Trust in him and you will not thirst. Anyone who eats this bread will live forever. This bread, drink this cup, come to him and never be hungry. Eat this bread, drink this cup, trust in him and you will not thirst. If we believe and eat this bread, we will have eternal life. Eat this bread, drink this cup, come to him and never be hungry. Eat this bread, drink this cup, Trust in him and you will not thirst.
in your hand and feel the place of the nails and do not be unbelieving, but believing. Alleluia. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, almighty God, that our reception of this paschal sacrament may have a continuing effect in our minds and hearts through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Bow down for the blessing. May God, who by the resurrection of his only begotten Son was pleased to confer on you the gift of redemption and of adoption, give you gladness by his blessing. Amen. May he, who by whose redeeming work you have received the gift of everlasting freedom, make you heirs to an eternal inheritance. And may you who have already risen with Christ in baptism through faith by living in a right manner on this earth be united with him in the homeland of heaven. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. Please join in the singing of our closing hymn. Number 902, O breathe on me, O breath of God. Number 902. is pure.